Hello, uh, welcome back to a, another video, just a very quick one today showing you how to set up a tepidizer system for boiling uh, liquids. Uh, I recently did a video on a steam turbine build which was for producing steam for a steam turbine and we I got a few questions about how to actually set up a tepidizer setup like this with the pocket of gas in here without debug. Uh, it's actually really, really easy, so I thought I'd just show you today quickly. Uh, I am in debug just for the sake of the video. It's really easy to do, really. This is just quicker for me. So I've got a couple of rooms built over here, and this is just to demonstrate what you need to do. So the first thing is, imagine this is your tepidizer room. First thing you want to get in there is your tepidizer. Put your switch down, a thermo switch, so you can toggle it on and off. Um, and also, you'll probably want some automation in there, which I'll get to in a minute. You want to run your power through here. You want everything in this room so that you can seal this up in a minute. Now, once you've done all that, pump some gas into the room. You're going to want you know, upwards of a kilo of gas in the room, ideally, and leave one of these tiles out. You've got your boiler plate here in the center, which is ideally made out of tungsten, and make sure all these things are made out of at least gold. Um, if you can make it out of tungsten, great. Uh, once you've done that, the next thing you're going to do is pump some liquid into the room. Now you can use a pump with a, valve, uh, a vent, uh, you can use a bottle empty at this point, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you've got access to, just pump some liquid into the room. You're going to want enough really to submerge the pump. Now once you've done that, the next thing to do is get a dupe in here and just knock out one of these tiles. Now I want my gas to go here in this case, uh, actually I want it to go this way. So if I knock out this tile, the liquid's going to fall down here. We're going to lose a little bit of this gas, but the rest of it is going to get pumped into this corner. Okay, now we've got 7.9 kilograms of natural gas in this tile here. Um, then all you need to do is get a dupe to come in. Uh, we'll make it out of abyssalite and build that tile. Okay, once that's done, get a dupe to come in again. Mop up your excess oil. And then all you need to do is pump out whatever gas is in the room. I'd always recommend making this a vacuum afterwards. Uh, probably the easiest way of doing it is to... Let me just get rid of you. Uh, make yourself a little water lock. So something like this. Boop. Uh, not quite like that. <laughs> uh, get rid of this and this and this. And then you can have access over here for a dupe. And you can just vacuum all this out. And then when you're done, just wall it off. Okay. Once that's a vacuum, you can then start pumping in your liquid, do what you want really. Um, the next thing I'll just explain very quickly is how to set up the, the wiring for it, the automation. Now I've got a little build here that's just going to simulate boiling geyser water. So I may as well, if I want steam, I might as well boil it straight from the geyser, which sort of makes sense to me. So I've got a little coal gen set up and a battery over here. I've primed it with a dupe just so I've got some coal in the system. Um, I've then behind here, I have my power wire going to the tepidizer and this bridge here is just to transfer the temperature from my oil to my pocket of gas. So I've got two kilos of hydrogen behind here. This bridge will just act to conduct the heat from the oil straight back to my bubble of gas. It's just a little bit more accurate that way. Um, automation wise, what we have here is a very simple switch. So down here we've got an AND gate. This AND gate is connected to receive a signal from this thermo sensor, right? And also this uh, pulse uh, switch we've got up here. So what this will basically do, if I flick this switch on, our buffer switch just sent a pulse, which goes to our NOT gate. And you can see the green lights toggling on and off. If I go into the automation overlay, you'll hear it. Okay. And what that's basically doing is potentially temporarily giving our tepidizer a signal, which lets it boot on for a second and go off again. The thermo switch at the other side is the other element of this AND gate. It's basically set to run if below 135 degrees. If I set that to 120, I've now not got a signal and my tepidizer won't do anything. If I turn it up to, uh, if I can select it, if I turn it up to 130, it'll toggle back on. So the pulse, the pulse switches, or pulse, what's it called? Pulser, I'm going to call it a pulse clock, sorry. What this is basically going to do is constantly send a little intermittent signal on, 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 off, 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 off. That's all it does. So that's now heating up our room, and it's heating up these tiles. If I then was to deconstruct uh, these buildings over my geyser, which are currently capping it, my geyser can start emitting steam. Let me speed this up a little bit. 
So it's emitting water, the water's hitting the plate, and eventually it'll start boiling. The initial hit of water is going to cool our plate down a little bit, and you can see it's now going to start rising up again. And that's it, basically. That's how it works. So it's a really simple build. It is very much doable without debug. Um, you just really need to make sure you prime your areas. So once you have, I would recommend doing this without a pump, because otherwise you have to get back in and get your pump afterwards. A real easy way to actually um, make a vacuum is just to start from a vacuum and then build with diagonal tiles. So if we had uh, a block like this, okay, if we were to dig out the center tiles, there would be a vacuum. Well, with diagonal building, you can actually do that by building diagonally and creating a vacuum and working your way out the room. Um, it's entirely up to you how you choose to do it, but that is basically how it works. And it's very much, as I say, very much doable in normal game. You can see here we've boiled off this excess water now and we're waiting for another hit from our guys. Uh, realistically, you'd probably want a condenser in this room as well or be moving your steam elsewhere with a pump, uh, depending on what you were trying to do. So I hope that helps. I hope that answers some of the questions. Uh, any other questions you might have, please let me know. Uh, but for now, thank you very much. Bye-bye.